zero. Hi guys, um, we are back again. This is the second part of the time value of money. So I have with me Ms. Jakida, and this is a continuation. So, okay. right, so Ms. Jakida, you have given us some valuable information, which I think is gonna, is gonna, it's gonna be like the focal point of what we need to know going forward. Good, good, absolutely. Well, right. now we're gonna talk about the time value of money. Time value of money. Okay. Right. Um, we've all been guilty of spending, um, you know, not spending, but just, just squandering time, right? Um, you know, and it's, it's especially costly when you lose the value of money over that time. You never get right. the time back or the money that you lost. Right. Time value of money is, is very cru crucial when we are um, thinking about saving, you know, um, for the future, for our future. Right. This the time is one of our, one of our most precious commodities. Would you agree, John? Yeah, of time. course. Time, you know. Okay. Time is so valuable. How long do you have until you pay off your car or home? You know, or to to spend to to, to send your kids to college, um, to, or even to retire, or possibly run out of money before you die, right? You need to know your numbers and why right. it's important because it forces us to value the time that we have. Right. Right. <laughs> Of course. So there are three ways to leverage the time of money. You know, you want to start now, save regularly, and be patient. Patient is the key when when time when when the uh, the value of uh, the time value of money. Patience is the key. Hmm. Starting early is always a good idea. You know, but it's never too late to start. But starting early is the idea. It makes a significant difference when it comes to saving for, um, you know, for your retirement. In this particular case, saving from the ages of 22 to 30 is better than from ages 30 to 67, right? Right. So it's good to start early. Start early. But if you can't start early, it's just never... It's never too late to start. Never too late, right. Never too late. You want to start whenever you can, right? But the sooner the better. So um, in this particular case, $110,000, 892 better um, after putting away 4.75 times less money. So let's take a look at this. This is a common sense principle to understand that is frequently ignored. The longer you wait, the more you have to save to hit your goal. So don't wait. Right. right. So um, let me just kind of go back that slide and just kind of review that slide with you again. Right. So um, Sarah, in this particular case, um, she has $110,000, almost $111,000 more than, than what George has put in, right? So at this particular example here, you know, she's at the age of, of 22. You know, she sets aside $4,000 a year. Okay, that's roughly about $3,300 a month. And then uh, over, the pa over the period of, of eight years, she stops at the age of 29, right? never putting anything else in there. But even though she stops, it's gaining for her. Sorry about this. I don't know why this keeps coming up. Okay. Can you still see that, John? Yes, I okay. see everything. Okay, perfect. So, um, whoops. Sorry about that. That's fine. Yeah, so she was able to say, even though she didn't put anything else in the account, after the age of 29, again, she was able to save, um, you know, five times, almost five times more than what um, George has been, has done. 
So if you take a look at George's example, you know, he starts at the age of 30, putting in the same amount of money, you know, mm -hmm. um, but on his particular case, it took him 38 years, you know, to, to continue to add that $300 a month in his account, right? But he still didn't get nearly as much as Sarah did, mm -hmm. you know? So, so the sooner, in this particular example, the time value of money, the sooner you start, you know, the better, you know, your, your assets can grow for you. Okay, right. much quicker, right? So, so it's true, saving less earlier can crash savings more, um, more later. L you know, again, looking at this scenario, Sarah again was able to save a lot more even though she, she stopped earlier, much earlier than, than George. So can I ask a question here? So um, Sarah set aside 4,000 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. Did she put that money in the bank? No, no th not, not the bank. And we're gonna talk about that, um, John. Yeah, I just want somebody to understand that we are still getting to that point where um, they may have that clarification. Right, exactly. So, so, somebody might have asked that, where did she put the money? Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really good question, really good question. So we're gonna talk about that. Okay. Okay. Okay, here. So the sucker-minded. You know, sucker-minded people never think it's a good time to take care of this. You know, the wealthy-minded always get started as soon as they can, which is now, if not sooner, right? right? So, you know, I know saving, I'm just quoting this this particular quote here. I know savings, saving is important, but, but now just not a good time for me to deal with it. That's a lot, a lot of, a lot of times that happens. You just don't want to deal with it, or you feel that you just don't have enough money to save, to put away. Right. right. That's how the suckers think, you know, but the wealthy think, you know, here's the deal. Time is money. Time is valuable. Every right. day counts. Building my financial future starts now. Exactly. And <laughs> I, I have a program that I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. the mind of a millionaire compared to the mind of just like just like you said the suckers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they think right. like they are not even ready they think like there is still time meanwhile those who really want to make money they feel like there is no time even right no time yeah. to wait right now we have to start right now exactly so and you're right. you know John, I mean, I mean, you, you, you see it, I see it, I do it all the time, you know, going down to your local coffee shop or your Starbucks, you know, spending, you know, five, seven bucks a day, you know, just think about what you can do with that $7 a day, you know, over right. a week of a month time, you know, a year time, right? If you right. just easily start putting those funds away, into a vehicle that's going to benefit you in the long run and that's how the wealthy think the wealthy thinks sure you know time time is money you know every day counts right every day counts exactly. so so the time value of money is a concept that money you have now is worth more than the initial sum in the future due to its potential earning capacity just like we we're talking about the compounding interest yeah. Mm -hmm, exactly. So let's talk about, you know, um, you know, where really where, you know, your question about where did Sarah or George, what, did, how did they invest the $300 to get, you know, a hundred plus thousand dollars, right? Right. Surely it's not in the bank, right? You agree with me, right? <laughs> That's a question that we, um, I mean, somebody who is watching, they're going to like want to know. Right. Is it a bank or is it where? <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's really the, 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 the reason behind this book, you know, how money works, stop being a sucker, you know. 
Um, and we'll talk about that. You know, the, the, this whole thing about stop being a sucker. Really, what does that mean? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so we talk about that. So, so the rule of 72, you know, it, it's a quite interesting um, concept. But if anything, you know, I want your listeners to, if, if they don't take away anything from our discussion tonight, please remember the rule of 72. Okay, so let's go through it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're having lots of fun right now, right? So now we're getting into a lot of good stuff here. <laughs> so um, we're getting very close, you know, to the closing of, of today's session. Um, now, but one of my favorite parts about it is, again, you know, the rule of 72. Now, John, have you ever heard of the rule of 72? And, and, <laughs> and I, you, I know you and I have, because I sat down with you and Antoinette. Right. But a lot of people don't know what the rule of 72 is. Right. Even me, I want that refreshment. Maybe it's going to add something. Sure, sure. To what, to what, to what I, I already know. Right, right. <laughs> so it's a little known mathematical equation. It's a short-term math equation that the wealthy have used for years. Everyone should know about it. You basically, it's, it's, you simply divide any interest rate into the number 72, and it tells you how long it takes your money to double. It works for you if you save money. It works against you if you borrow money. Mm. Okay. So mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mental math equation that will allow you to determine how long it will take your monies to double, okay? So 72 right. divided by the interest rate equals the time of, of your money, uh, the, time your, your, the time for your money to double, okay? So let's take a look at this example here. Um, at 1%, it takes 72 years for $1 to turn into $2. That's a pretty long time, right? Right. Would anyone willingly know to choose this particular option? Nope. So keep that in mind, okay, <laughs> as, as we go through. Right. <laughs> when I look at 1%, I feel like it's so small. <laughs> right, right. Now think about right. what your bank is giving you. Your bank is not even giving you 1%. Up to 1%, that's it. They're giving you, on average, the bank these days is averaging 0.09%. Right. Okay. So let's look at this a little bit further. So as you can see, the better rate of return you get, the faster your money can double. So let's take a look at 3%, you know, 3% here. So 3% every 24 years at 6% every 12 years at 9% every 8 years and 12% every 6 years for your funds to double. Now, yeah. I'm liking this. That's, that's more like it, right? 12% wow. versus 1%. By the time I invest, you know, I, I'm like no, no spring chicken, right? But 72 years for my $1 to turn, it, turn into two, I'll be long gone. It's gonna take right. 72 years for that to happen. Long gone, okay? So let's take a look a little bit further. Here's another way to look at it, okay? In terms of the number, in terms of the number of doubles you could have over a lifetime. So at 1%, if you're lucky, like I mentioned before, if you live, and if you live long enough to get $1 to double, right, at 6%, okay, you could have four doubles, okay, so 10,000, 20,000, right, even at 12%, you know, um, it would double, uh, um, eight, eight, it, it, it could be as many as the eight, eight doubles, right, so each double, is twice the money. Every double counts. Right. And I'm just kind of looking at the, um, okay. So take a look at that 12%. So like in the market these days, John, um, on average, 
the, the stock market over the last 30 years has been averaging 10 and a half percent, right? So if at the age of 19, you see this $10,000 here, right? Yes. So at the age of 19, and we focus on 12%, you know, at the age of 31, you know, it is, it's doubled for you, you know, four times 40,000. And then even at the age of 67, you know, at 12%, you know, you're almost sitting at, you know, $2.6 million, right? Because right. It, it doubles eight times, eight doubles, you know, every six years. Now, if you were go back into this 1% that we talked about, right, that 1%, you know, at the age of 67, you know, you're only going to have $16,000. So the importance here is, you know, when the bank is only giving you 1% or less, you know, you want to be careful with that in, in, in terms of saving on a long-term basis, because it's not going to build you wealth, you know, mm -hmm. the banks are good, you know, for emergency, like, like if you want to, you know, for liquidity purposes, it's good. But in terms of investing on a long period of time to where your money is doubling for you, compounding for you, the time right. value of money takes a place, takes a part of that, you know, you want to look at the higher rate of returns. Okay. So in right. Zoe's particular, in, with Zoe, you know, she's 19 years of age, just received $10,000 as an inheritance. You know, if I wanted to grow it to 1 million by retirement, you know, how many doubles and what interest rate do I need to have or do I need to get to, okay? And we see here that if she wants to get to a million dollars, you know, she's looking at a higher rate of return or higher interest rate more so than this 1% because the 1%, mm -hmm. 2% is and not gonna get, mm -mm, it's not gonna get you any place, okay? Right. So, so you need more than 9% interest and almost, seven doubles to reach 1 million at the age of 67, right? So, you know, having that double digit rate of return um, is very, very important when it comes to doubling your money. So I hope that answered your question in returns to, in, in regards to, you know, where one should invest their funds to get to a million, $2 million or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the rate of returns that we're talking about. Right. And, and the bank, the, 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 the title of the book, Stop Being a Sucker. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with, um, you know, the banks used to give out dumb, dumb suckers. <laughs> you know. You know, um, except those who don't know what the banks are. <laughs> they try to hide things from people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have, you have to push hard and deep. Before they can like tell you certain things, they're like, "Oh, okay, that." Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how how can somebody increase the percentage? Is it your decision, or it it depends on certain factor? Yeah, it depends on a number of factors. Exactly. Yeah, it depends upon how long you have, you know, to invest. You know, you may have a um, an individual that's very close to retirement, like at, you know, 55 and, and they want to, you know, stop working right. and to retire, you know, um, and so you don't have a lot of time to, to really invest in the market. So at that particular right. time, we're looking at other types of strategies that will allow you to still get a, a little bit higher rate of interest than six, but it may not be in the market, in the stock market. It may be like, you know, um, fixed assets like bonds or municipal bonds you know, that's providing a little bit higher interest rate, um, but not as great as the market, you know, because you don't have the time to ride the ups and downs of the market. You don't have time to lose because again, you're going to be retiring within, you know, five years or less, then you don't want to be too risky with whatever you already have saved. And so therefore, you know, um, we can come up with other types of strategies to still get you a pretty good interest rate already return, but maybe not as risky, you know, with your assets. So it really depends upon, you know, um, wh where that individual wants to go. Right. Got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So any questions regarding, regarding that, that rule of 72 as I keep going? Um, 
not really at this point. I think it is clear the way you explain it. Mm -hmm. Good, good. <laughs> okay. So remember the question I asked you about that 1%, you know, would anyone choose 72 years to double? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. No. If people don't know how money works. There is almost $10 trillion just sitting in passport, passbook um, savings account, John, um, on average earning, you know, 0.1%, 0.10%, you know, 0.10%. That's really just a fraction of 1%, as you know. Okay. So, so this is a thing to kind of keep in mind that, you know, Again, there's almost just ten, there's there's tons and tons of money out there. Unfortunately, it's sitting in these passbook savings account that's really not earning anything, right? They're just kind of sitting there. And so our goal here is to come in and help those individuals really understand the, the rate of return, understand that interest rate, and re, understand how that rule of 72 works. Right. Okay, so again, if you divide that 0.10% into 72, you know, 720 years to double, it just doesn't make any sense, right? As George would say here, in other words, $1 in 2020 would be $2 in the year 2740. <laughs> that's, that's not cool, right? Oh, it's just God. not cool. That's not a lot. <laughs> right? Not good at all. Okay. Yeah. And, and here on the other end here, you know, um, and, and just so that we, so that we're clear, the same place that gives you this, this point one zero percent can charge you 16% or more, you know, on a credit card, right? Mm -hmm. The bank mm -hmm. charges you like, remember my analogy when I got out of school, you know, those, those credit card companies, those banks were just throwing out credit cards. Yeah. Because did not really have a clue as to how much money I'd have to pay them back. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I'm paying them 21, 22, 24%, you know, interest rate. And they're only giving me 0.10% on my savings account. No, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that means that what that means though, John, is that that means that that bank, you know, that means that their that bank is doubling their money. Of course. In, in this particular case, you know, 16% every 4.5 years. So your 200, your $300 that you're giving to the bank for that credit card that you have, they're taking that, you know, and they're getting really good rate of return, really good interest rate so that their funds can double much faster right. than, than 720 years. Does that make sense, John? Yes, a lot. Right? So let's get in the mindset of stop being a sucker. You know, um, you need to know how money works, not tomorrow, but today, how money works and stop being a sucker. And, and as and my analogy is going back when, I don't think they do it too much in, uh, nowadays, but maybe about five, 10 years ago, when you walk into the bank, they had these bowls of suckers, you know, that you just, take out lollipops, those lollipop suckers, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but what, you know, a hidden agenda behind that, you know, like, oh, sucker, every time a, a, a <laughs> bank member comes in, they're suckers because mm -hmm. we're charging them 21%, but we're only giving them, you know, 0.09% on right. their money. You know, that's not going to work. So I hope, what makes sense. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, so anyway, so this is just the, again the dumb dumb um, sucker example that I just talked with you about. The customers are just they're just suckers, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so again, the rule of seventy two works the other way. So let's take a look at this. You can also use this to figure out what return you'll need for a savings goal or what a loan will cost you, right? Mm. So seventy two years divided by the years left to save equals your interest rate needed, okay? For example, I have a $500,000 retirement account and I'm 57 years old. Are you saying that if I want my money to double to 1 million by retirement, which is 10 years from now, I can divide 72 by 10 and get the interest rate that I need to get to that $1 million, right? So in this particular case, 
72 divided by 10 because she only has 10 years left to retire, then she needs to find or that her coach or advisor, financial advisor, need to come mm -hmm. up with a plan that will allow her to get 7.2% interest needed right. to reach a particular goal, right? So if you know that you, you want, you know, to live on three, $5,000 a month in retirement, what do you need to do now to get to that particular point? And That's a coach a will allow you to, will help you get to that particular point. And that is what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I can do. Right. Exactly. So you talk of, um, I know you have this strategy, which you call the aggressive, um, you talk of the, um, how do you even talk about it? The, there's a strategy that you, you talk when you, you met us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you talk about the aggressive strategy, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Offensive, the offensive and defensive strategies. Right, right. That, in, and, that individuals and families, um, they need to know in order to, to achieve their dream, right? Exactly, exactly. You have to come up with some strategies, with a plan, you know, um, that could be, you know, on, on the offense or the defense, you know, of whatever the strategy that, you, that we're coming up with. We have to have some kind of plan in place to get you to your goal, you know. Yeah, and and like like in this particular example here in males in males particular case you know she want to try to reach to a million dollars but she only has 10 years left you know what type of vehicle will allow her to get to that particular point you know to receive a seven point you know to receive that 7.2 interest rate okay so if you take that 72 divided by the years that she has left here to retire then she needs to come up with a million dollars based upon her current asset value here of $500,000. Mm -hmm. then, then we need to find out a vehicle, figure out a way to get her to that 7.2 interest rate or the 7.2 rate of return. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I hope that answers the question. Right. Right, right. So how, again, how suckers think, John, here, the rule of 72 sounds like math boring mm -hmm. boring <laughs> so many people hate mathematics mm -hmm. but on the wealthy you know how the wealthy and how the elite will think you know math simple. rocks the rule of 72 is simple powerful and impactful mm -hmm. it works for you and it can work against you okay right <laughs> okay so again how money works um you know we're at the conclusion, John, here of today's, um, today's course. Principles, you know, like you just learned, will bring up questions like the ones you, you know, you see on the screen here. And some of the questions that you've already asked already, you know, should you use a bank account? Um, yeah. What are other safe options? Should you refinance a loan at a lower rate? You know, what can you do to help make more money double, to help your money double possibly? A financial professional, financial coach, you know, is the best person to help you turn to those particular questions and get those questions answered for you. And we can, you know, we can we can uh, discuss those things, you know, with with your with families and individuals to help to help you right. to, to those answers. Okay. So so basically, in closing, John, it's really you know, um, let me just go back to to my first page here. And um, while you're doing that, I'm going to ask you before we close something about refinancing. Mm -hmm. I know it, it, it's good in one hand and it's also bad on the other hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, is, that, is that something you think you can share with us? I mean, no matter whatsoever i know that people can refinance their house their home mm -hmm. their car whatsoever business but refinancing usually take longer period right mm -hmm. and yeah. which, which which therefore means at the end you pay more even though you're paying less yeah exactly exactly um now now my personal experience regarding the refinance of the mortgage you know um mm -hmm. 
a lot of times you just, you know, if you need some additional um, cash outside of your, you know, um, of your mortgage, if your if your mortgage has really um, grown in value, you know, because mm -hmm. the mortgage is one of our, our largest, our biggest asset that yes. we have, you know, um, you know, in terms of building our assets and building our wealth, right? Um, so a lot of times individuals do refinance because they have equity, you know, they built in that equity, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you know what I mean by equity, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have equity in your home, a lot of times you can just pull cash out of that equity and just maybe pay off a couple of bills, you know, here and mm -hmm. there, you know, but, but just keep in mind that it does cost you money to refinance, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times if you're going to refinance, you have to, you should make a decision to stay within that home at least five more years. Oh, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Five or more years to take advantage of that, that, that opportunity because, you know, you're, you're spending more money and you're putting yourself into a hole if you do not. Right. right. So, and, and a lot of times, you know, um, it's okay, you know, it's okay to, to refinance, but, but keep in mind that um, the cost to refinance that, to pay off that work, to make it worth it, you need to stay in that home a little bit longer than about at least five years, at least five years. Right. Okay. Um, and so it's a good way to pay off some existing debt for sure. For sure. And to get in a lower, a lower interest rate for sure. You know, interest rates are, are great. They're about two, almost two, 3%. I'm very, very low. You know, so if you're in a higher interest rate, four and 5% right now, it could be worth your time. If you're going to stay there a little bit longer, than five years, it could be worth your time to to look into that refinance and the cost associated with that refi. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. And um, refinancing the car loan, because the car because cars are are liabilities, they're really not really an asset. Um, you know, the value of those cars they 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 plummet the minute you you drive it off the lot the lot. You know. You may think you 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 bought this this car for for thirty thousand dollars, but the minute you drive it off that lot, it has the plummet in value. You know, so at least ten ten thousand dollars. So it could be that you're upside down on that debt, right? So if you decide to to refinance or or sell that car, you know, and get into another car that's about the same amount, you know, right. you're putting you should you shooting yourself in the foot because you owe more on that existing car, you know? So, um, so refinancing on a car, I have a little bit more question on because again, it's not a, it's not an asset. It's really a liability. It's a liability. Mm -hmm. That's true. So if I may ask you this, I know we're coming close. Mm -hmm. We're coming to the end. So we know that when you talk to, when you counsel, when you coach people, you provide them this, strategy that they need um, to avoid huge um, principal, right? This is strategy, this is strategy that they need that they must like put in place to avoid that huge principal that um, whatsoever banks they usually put on top of of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it um what is that strategy that you were trying to talk? Is it about the um, the the rule of um, seventy two? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rule of seventy two is 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 something that we talk about a lot. You know, just so they understand that principle. You know, understanding how that that interest rate can 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 work for you and how it can work against you. You know, and mm -hmm. so. Depending upon you know the length of time or, or what that particular um, person's goal is, you know if they really want to just focus on, you know on short-term savings or if they want to focus on mid-term savings, you know mid-term saving meaning that if they want to focus on on um, having having a, a lump sum down having a pay, down payment on a home, you know having a down payment on a car even. Um, you know, a down payment or towards ed education for their children, whether they are in preschool, high school, or college, you know, because 
you know, there are tuitions there for high school as well, private institutions, right, as you know. Um, so, so if someone wants to kind of focus on that particular particular uh, avenue, then we will structure that, that plan, that plan in place. We'll put a plan in place. And so we may not be as aggressive in terms of our investment strategy, you know, going into the stock market. You know, we still could go into the stock market, but just maybe not utilize going into 100% stocks. We could do a combination of, of equities, maybe 60% equities and maybe the 40% in, in fixed bonds, like, like right. your bonds, your, um, your fixed, act, fixed asset, things of that nature. So it just depends if you, if you are focusing on saving for, for 10 years or longer, you mm -hmm. know, for, re, for retirement income, then yeah, we want a little, a little bit more aggressive strategy in terms of the market, okay? Got but, you. Um, but if we wanna just focus on emergency savings, then, then you probably want to stay away from the market, the stock market, okay? mm -hmm. because that emergency saving is used for one, one thing really, and that's for liquidity. You want to make sure that you can go down your local, down the street to your local bank and, and withdraw, you know, a couple hundred dollars or whatever that you may need. So you want to focus on that liquidity. And we also talk about taxes, John. We talk about strategies, you know, I specialize in tax minimization, the power of tax planning. And so we want to look at those, all those buckets of taxations so we can make sure that you are um, lowering your taxable income as much as possible to right. improve retirement. So we talk about those particular things as well, too. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. So I think we got everything that we need for today. For today okay sure sure you know, um that was a great presentation i really want to appreciate you for coming and i want to ask you if 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 those who watch us they they want to hear again from you are you are you going to come back would you be happy to come back of course, John, for you and Antoinette, anything, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but if anyone wants to sit down with me on an individual basis or maybe perhaps give me a call and, and maybe ask a couple questions, you know, I'll be able to provide that information and I can give that information to you along with my website as well. Okay. Right. I know that people, people are going to listen to and they're going to like to reach out to you. So that would be that would be great. That would be awesome. So yeah. we'd love to hear that. Let me just um, put up my um, my information really quickly. Okay. Bear with me just for a second. <laughs> All right, this. Okay, so John, you should see now my uh, my website. It is. Um, uh, oh. Yeah, right there. www.wealthwave.com um, backslash row, R O W E. Okay. Right. And my awesome. phone number is 720 296 1131. Awesome. This is great. I know many, they're going to want to reach out to you, and I'll be happy to get so many people as they can so yeah. that they can ask from you directly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they leave a comment, I'm going to make sure that you also get it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly, exactly. And just to just in closing, you know, John, it's just, it's, it's never too late to start saving anywhere. Right. right. It's never too late. The time is now, you know, understanding the simple concepts um, that the wealthy and the lead has had all these many uh, years, you know, it's time for us to have those same type of, the same type of information that they have access to, right? And so we'll be more than happy to, to help them with that um, with awesome. concept, okay? So thank awesome. you for your time. I appreciate it. Looking forward to, to assisting you in any kind of way that I can in, in, in the community. Just Good. give so, me a call. Thank you so much, Nijakida. So thank you. We'll be happy to see you again. You are welcome. You're Bye. welcome. Bye, take care and be safe. Okay, thanks, John. You're welcome.